Hello everyone. In this uh, video, we'll see how do we solve graphically a linear programming problem of maximization type. The question here it is maximize z, which is equal to five times x1 plus four times x2, subject to six times x1 plus four times x2 less than or equal to 24, x1 plus two x2 less than or equal to six, negative x1 plus x2 less than or equal to one, x2 less than or equal to two, means there are totally four, four constraints, one objective function, four constraints, and the last one is non-negativity restrictions. X1, X2, both are non-negative. Let us start solving it. <clears throat> First of all, I will convert all these constraints to uh, inequations. Basically, these are all inequations to equations. So let line one L1 be six times x1 plus four times x2 equal to 24 call it as equation one l2 b x1 plus two times x2 equal to six call it as equation two l3 b negative x1 plus x2 equal to one call it as equation three and l4 b x2 equal to 2, call it as equation 4. Once we uh, convert all these inequations to equation, the this, as, this is basically line now. We need to find out coordinates so that we can be able to plot it on a graph. So first let us consider L1, consider x1 and x2, put x1 as 0, means this term will become zero. So you will have four X2 equal to 24. That means X2 will be six. Put X2 as zero. So this second term will become zero in L1. So six X1 equal to 24 means X1 will become four. Now we have coordinates zero comma six, the first coordinate, second coordinate is four comma zero. Now, same way L2, <coughs> put x1 as 0, <clears throat> we'll get 2x2 equal to 6 means x2 will be 3. Put x2 as 0, then x1 will become 6. So the first coordinate is 0, 3, second coordinate is 6, 0. Same way, L3, put x1 as 0, so this term will become 0, so straight away x2 equal to 1. Now, if I put x2 as 0, what will happen is negative x1 will be 1. That means x1 will be negative 1. That doesn't satisfy your non-negativity restrictions. So this I will say not applicable, NA not applicable. So I will try to increase the value of x2. So already 0 we wrote and it is not applicable. 1 is already there. Let me not use that. Let me increase it to 2. So if I put x2 as 2 and take this x1 to the other side, 1 to this side, what will happen is <clears throat> uh, 1 will come this side means 2 minus 1 is 1. This x1, if it goes that side, it will become positive x1. That means x1 is 1. This is a valid coordinate, 1 comma 2, because both are positive. Last one, we need not find any coordinates because it is straight, means x2 takes value 2 always irrespective of any value what x1 takes. So we can directly draw this without finding the coordinates. Now let us draw the graph. Now, this is our x1 axis. This is our x2 axis. Now, consider this as 0. <coughs> and consider 1 centimeter. Call it as 1. 
kemudian two, three, four, five, six. Same way here. One centimeter, I'll consider it as one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now let us draw <coughs> line one. X one is zero, X two is six. So X one is zero, X two is six. Point will be on the top of this. X one is four, X two is zero. X one is four, X two is zero. So the point will be on the top of this four. Now let me join those two points. This is our line one. Now I can uh, draw the shading. I mean, I need to do the shading because here it is actually, the original problem is not actually an equation. It is an inequation. Means I need to find out the region which satisfies this inequation. Means since it is having a less than or equal sign, the shading will happen towards the left of this line or down the line. Shading will happen. So instead of drawing every time the shading, because all the signs are less than or equal to, everything is same, we can do the shading together for the common region. Uh, common region in the sense, which whichever region satisfies all these inequations, we'll shade that only. So straight away, let us move on drawing the second line. X1 is zero, X2 is three. That is point will be here. Then X1 is six, X2 is zero point will be here. Now let me join these two. <clears throat> this is our line two. Then line three. X1 is 0, 1. This is one coordinate. 0, 1. Other one is this. 1, 2. So x1 is 0, x2 is 1, x1 is 0, x2 is 1. That point is here. Then x1 is 1, x2 is 2. Well, the point will be here. And first of all, in before drawing, okay, I can draw 1, comma 2. Let me draw x1 is 1, x2 is 2. L4, X2 is 2 irrespective of values whatever X1 takes. So it will be a horizontal line for the X1 axis. Exactly parallel to X1 axis. So this will keep on going. So I'll put an arrow mark there. Now I have drawn all the lines. This is our line two, line three. I should I should draw line three. I didn't draw that. I need to join this point that is zero comma one and one comma two. These two I have to join it. This also will keep on going. That is our line three. This is our <coughs> line four. Now the common region uh, which satisfies all these inequations will be this. Okay. So now the corner points, we'll call this as O, this will call it as A, this will call it as B, this we will call it as C, this we will call it as D, this we will call it as E. So I will say the common feasible region 
when i say common it is sat that region will satisfy all the inequations that is the meaning of it common feasible region is o a b c d and e that is the common feasible region once you identify the common feasible region of course we know the corner points are corner points are o a b c d and e once we identify the corner points next step is to find out the corresponding z value what is the z equation it is given in the problem 5x1 plus 4x2 5x1 plus 4 times x2 now if i want z o i need to substitute first of all what is o o is origin so 0 comma 0 what is a a is this point this is 0 comma 1 <clears throat> Then B is intersection of line 3 and line 4. Okay. What is C? It is intersection of line 2 and line 4. Because it is here. This line is line 2. This line is line 4. Okay. Then D. Corner point D is <clears throat> it is intersection of line 2 and line 1 line 1 intersection line 2 what is e it is straight away i can write 4 comma 0 even this b it is clear because this point already we identified it is 1 comma 2 so i can write this as 1 comma 2 instead of uh, solving and all right so z of o will be 5 times 0 plus 4 times 0 which is 0 z of a will be 5 times 1 i'm sorry 5 times 0 plus 4 times 1 which will give us 4 z of b will give me 5 times 1 plus 4 times 2 which is 5 plus 8 13 and uh, i can find out z of e which is 5 times 4 plus 4 times 0, which will give me 20. Now, for finding C and D, <clears throat> we know it is an intersection of these two lines. D is intersection of these two lines. Let me solve the equations. Means uh, for finding out B, sorry, for finding out C, I have to solve line 2 and line 4. If I have to find B, I need to solve, I'm sorry, C. If I have to find C, I need to solve line 2 and line 4. Okay. So that means second equation and your fourth equation, I should solve it. So fourth equation is directly saying x2 as 2. Let me substitute in second equation x2 as 2. So, x1 plus 2 times 2 equal to 6, which means x1 is 6 minus 4, which is 2. Therefore, our c is 2 comma 2, because x1 is also 2, x2 is also 2. I can write here 2 comma 2. Now, if I have to find out d, point d, I need to solve l1 and l2. So, what we can do is, I will multiply second equation by i'll make it four if i have to make it four i have to multiply both sides by two so i'll say second equation by two you get two times x1 plus four times x2 equal to 12. now let me write the first equation on the top of this six times x1 plus four times x2 equal to 24. if i subtract these two i'll get 4x1 equal to 12 or x1 equal to 3. Now that I got x1 as 3, let me substitute in the second equation x1 as 3 plus 2 times x2 equal to 6 means 2x2 equal to 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. That means x2 is 1.5.
So x1 is 3, x2 is 1.5. 3 comma 1.5. Now let us find out what is <coughs> z of c and z of d. z of c is 5 times z of c is what? 2 comma 2. So 5 times 2 plus 4 times 2. 5 twos are 10. 10 plus 8, 18. Now z of d, 5 times 3 plus 4 times 1.5. This will give me 15 plus 6, which is 21. Now, find out because this problem is of minimize, sorry, maximization type. I need to find which particular point gives me the maximum Z value. So, if you look into all these numbers, Z values at O, origin O, it is 0, A, it is 4, B, it is 13, E, it is 20, C, it is 18, and D is 21. That means the maximum is 21. So the optimal solution will be max z is 21, corresponding x1 will be 3, x2 will be 1.5. That will be the solution for this particular linear programming problem, which we solved it graphically. In case if you find the contents of this video to be useful to you, I request you to please like it, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you.